And in our number one position, the most popular, most sought after comic book of the 1970s is... Hello to all of my porn stashed 1970s comic book fans. Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Last week, we posted a remake of the top 20 best comic books of the 1980s. So I can't make a remake video of the top 20 comic books of the 1980s and not give love to my favorite era in comic books and that is the 1970s. Earlier on in my YouTube career I did post a top 20 comic books of the 1970s video but I kind of wanted to remake it just to you know keep it updated. So the 70s was probably one of the most interesting eras in comic books. We were just getting out of the silver age and delving into the bronze age of comics and there were a lot of things going on in the bronze age we had new genres of comic books coming back and making their comebacks like horror comics which up until this point had not really been experimented with a lot just because of the restrictions of the comics code authority speaking of the comics code authority this is also the era in which we saw a relaxation of some of the comics code authority rules and regulations other awesome genres we saw coming out of this era were some sword and sorcery westerns horror and this was all in addition to superhero comics so this was just an amazing and exciting time for comic books so let's just jump right into this list starting off with our book in the number 20 position and that is amazing adventures number 11 this is probably one of the lesser known books on the list this is the first appearance of the furry beast for all of you x-men geeks out there you probably remember that when Beast made his first appearance in X-Men number one back all the way back in 1962. He actually did not have any fur. Most comic book fans uh, nowadays know Beast as having fur. Well, this is the first time that we actually saw Beast with fur. And I think he got the fur, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, due to a science experiment. Number 19, Conan the Barbarian, number one. This is the first appearance of Conan the Barbarian in comic books. For those of you that are huge fans of Conan the Barbarian, you probably will know that Conan is a character that was created by Robert E. Howard. And uh, Robert E. Howard wrote a lot of different stories about Conan. This is the first time we see Conan in comic books. And it basically, this comic book started a whole sword and sorcery craze in the 1970s. In addition to Conan, then you're seeing characters like Call the Conqueror and Red Sonia and so many comic books that are related to sword and sorcery. Now this is a quite an expensive comic book. Uh, I don't think nowadays you can get Conan the Barbarian number one for less than $500. But if you're just interested in reading uh, this particular story and this particular title, I really encourage you to uh, check out the reader's pick, which is Marvel Epic Collection Conan the Barbarian volume one, which can be found with a link in the description. Tomb of Dracula, number 10. This is another hot comic that came out of the 1970s. This is the first appearance of Blade, the Vampire Hunter. We cannot underscore the importance of Blade, even though he's more of kind of like a niche character. Uh, he did shoot up in popularity uh, when his movies actually came out in the late 1990s, as well as the early 2000s. Really, really hope that Marvel continues to do more with Blade. Amazing Spider-Man number 101. This is the first appearance of Morbius, the living vampire, and probably one of the coolest and most popular Spider-Man villains. Uh, really entertaining issue, actually. If you haven't uh, read it or, or, or checked it out, I highly encourage that you do. Uh, this is that issue where Spider-Man has like six arms and he, and he, for all intents and purposes, is turning into a spider and then Morbius becomes kind of like a bat. It's really cool. It also has the lizard in it. So aside from being Morbius's first appearance, this is a really entertaining issue. Highly recommend that you check it out. Iron Fist number 14. This is the first appearance of Sabretooth and Sabretooth is probably one of the most popular villains uh, in the X-Men and is especially important to the Wolverine character. Sabretooth and Wolverine, it is a rivalry that is for the ages. 
Sabretooth is to Wolverine what the Joker is to Batman. And because of the popularity of Sabretooth, this has become one of the most sought after books coming out of the 1970s. Our next spot is shared by two books and that is Batman number 227 and Batman number 251. There's nothing really uh, special that happens story-wise with these books, but the reason why they are so sought after and so popular and so remembered as uh, the best books, some of the best books of the 1970s is because these are iconic covers that were done by Neil Adams. Batman number 227, as you could probably tell, is a homage to Detective Comics number 31, which is probably one of the coolest covers coming out of the Golden Age. And then we have Batman number 251, which is a stellar, stellar Joker cover that was done by Neil Adams. And also uh, the reason why number 251 is just so popular among, among Batman collectors is because this is the first time that we see the Joker returning to his darker, more psychotic roots. Previous to this uh, point here, the Joker was more of a campy, silly character, uh, more akin to what you saw in the 1966 Batman Adam West TV show. Marvel premiere number 15. This is the first appearance of Iron Fist. Iron Fist was a, a character who actually enjoyed quite a bit of popularity uh, when he first hit the pages of Marvel premiere and uh, to the point where he eventually got his own series, uh, which was just the self-titled Iron Fist. Iron Fist uh, maintained its sales and continued as a solo series for a bit, but ultimately uh, the sales declined and they actually ended up joining Iron Fist and Power Man together. That comic book eventually became Power Man and Iron Fist. Werewolf by Night, number 32. This is the book coming out of this era that is probably the weirdest for me and um, I'll explain why. Uh, so Werewolf by Night number 32 is the first appearance of Moon Knight. And Moon Knight is kind of a cool character, uh, but th it is insane how expensive this book is and how much it has gone up in value. I understand Moon Knight is going to be making some screen appearances soon, but even before that, this book was very, very expensive. You're gonna have to explain to me why the Moon Knight book is so expensive. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that it's because this book is probably scarce and there probably weren't a lot of copies of this that were printed, but uh, that's just my guess. If you actually know why this book is so expensive, uh, please let me know in the comments. Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 134. This is the first appearance of Darkseid, uh, who is a huge DC uh, villain and uh, recently made an appearance in the Snyder Cut of the uh, Justice League movie. Uh, I actually really liked the Snyder Cut of, uh, of the Justice League. I actually liked it better than the original, and uh, it was really cool to see uh, Darkseid on the screen. Batman number 232. This is the first appearance of Raish al Ghul, uh, who is probably one of the most popular Batman uh, villains of all time. This book is super, super expensive and very, very highly sought after uh, just because of Ra's al Ghul's popularity in the uh, Batman franchise. This That makes it one of the most popular and most sought after books coming out of the 1970s. House of Secrets number 92. This is the first appearance of Swamp Thing and uh, another super expensive book. You could pretty much assume that every single book on this list is going to be quite expensive because they are significant, very, very significant books uh, that we have here. Uh, Swamp Thing is a character who uh, initially didn't enjoy too much popularity, but he soared uh, in sales and popularity in the 1980s when Alan Moore uh, took over writing duties for the Swamp Thing. Years later, we got uh, another stellar run by Scott Snyder, which I equally uh, enjoyed. Marvel Spotlight number five. This is the first appearance of the Ghost Rider. Uh, Ghost Rider, another solid character, supposed to be making some screen appearances soon uh, in Netflix. There were some movies about the Ghost Rider done. Uh, they weren't the greatest. I actually didn't mind the first one, but the second one was totally terrible. Uh, really am curious to see what Marvel does with Ghost Rider next. Iron Man number 55. This is the first appearance of Thanos, who is probably the coolest villain ever, one of the coolest villains ever, and probably the most popular villain of our time. Uh, this is due mostly in part to the fact that he made a legendary appearance in the last two Avengers movies and uh, he just really stuck in people's 
minds. Josh Brolin just did a stellar job playing Thanos and uh, just absolutely love this portrayal. That makes it one of the most sought after books coming out of the 1970s. Green Lantern, Green Arrow, number 76. Uh, this is a, a legendary issue. Uh, it is the first issue in a new run that was done by uh, Neil Adams and uh, Denny O'Neill. Uh, this comic book series was known for tackling a lot of social issues that were relevant at the time, and probably one of the most famous panels in uh, comic books came out of this comic book. It was the famous panel with the black man who is asking Green Lantern, you know, you did a lot for the orange skins and the purple skins, but what have you ever done for the black skins, Mr. Green Lantern? This is another super expensive book, probably looking at thousands of dollars to add this to your collection. But if you're just looking to read these stellar stories, uh, there will be a link in the description where you can pick up the trade paperback containing the Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams stories. X-Men number 101, this is the first appearance of the Phoenix. And if you were around in the 70s, you probably remember how popular, how crazy the X-Men stories were at this time. We all know what ends up happening to Jean Grey and the Phoenix. They really put X-Men on the map. X-Men number 94. This is the first appearance of the new X-Men team in the main ongoing Uncanny X-Men. The X-Men previously were not very popular not one of Marvel's more popular titles. It's really hard to imagine a time when the X-Men were not popular, uh, but nevertheless, it was true. They just really did not uh, impress a lot of the uh, publishers at Marvel with how they were performing. It wasn't until Chris Claremont took over the X-Men writing duties that this title just shot to superstardom, and it all started with this book here. Amazing Spider-Man number 121. This is the death of Gwen Stacy and probably the most shocking issue coming out of the 1970s. Uh, up until this point, people never really stayed dead in comic books, uh, but nevertheless, uh, Gwen Stacy was killed and stayed dead for a really, really, really long time. Now, of course, Marvel brought Gwen Stacy back and we see her as Spider Gwen. People just couldn't believe at the time that Marvel would kill Gwen Stacy's. There were, there were some people reading this comic at the time that were like, this was my Kennedy assassination moment. Like they just couldn't believe that Marvel would do something like this. And also we can't underscore the cultural significance of this book. Uh, for many, this signified the end of the Silver Age of comics and the official beginning of the Bronze Age of comic books. Amazing Spider-Man number 121. This is a huge heavy hitter book coming out of the 1970s. This is the first appearance of the Punisher. The Punisher is just such a super popular character uh, nowadays. And he was really a huge representation of the uh, darker, grittier stories that we're starting to see in the 1970s. Definitely not as dark and gritty as we saw in the 1980s, but nevertheless, all of that basically started in the 1970s and the Punisher is a living embodiment of that. Giant Size X-Men number one. This is the first appearance of the new X-Men team and the first appearance of so many characters, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Storm. This, is, this book is huge for first appearances, which makes it one of the most expensive books coming out of the era. This book here just made people excited about the X-Men again, and that is what makes it one of the most sought after books coming out of the 70s. And in our number one position, the most popular, most sought after comic book of the 1970s is none other than The Incredible Hulk number 181, which is the first appearance of Wolverine. This is the closest thing that we will ever get to an Action Comics number one in the, I guess, more modern age. Uh, this book is just stupid, stupid expensive. Uh, and that is due mostly in part to the fact that Wolverine is to this day, one of the most popular characters, not only on Marvel's roster, but one of the most popular characters in Marvel comics. It's just such an iconic cover. I absolutely love uh, this cover with Wolverine charging at the Incredible Hulk. Just, just great. I love this book. Again, really, really expensive to add to your collection, 
But if you're looking to just simply read this book and appreciate it for its cultural significance, there will be a link in the description where you can pick up the reader's pick. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Are there any other comic books coming out of the 1970s that you feel should have been on this list that did not make it? Please let me know in the comments. And as always, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.